All right, so you know how we do this. You bring the brain food, and this time it is, uh, well, it's next level. It really is. Yeah, you send us a YouTube link, and it's not, you know, the usual deep dive fare. This is an AI channeling Nietzsche. A chatbot philosopher. Exactly. Full on philosophical sparring with a chatbot. I mean, that's a, that's a nightmare. you really went there with this one. And honestly, I am here for it. Yeah. And it's not just some kind of gimmick or parlor trick. Right. This AI interview, it actually gives us a surprisingly intimate way to like really grapple with Nietzsche's ideas. Okay. It's like he's right here with us, you know challenging us, poking holes in our arguments, pushing us to think differently. Okay, so let's unpack this right off the bat. The AI tackles this huge misconception about Nietzsche. You know, that whole, he was a total nihilist thing. Oh yeah, he gets slapped with that label a lot. Right, it's like the interview is saying, hold up before you slap a bumper sticker on the guy. Exactly, because nihilism, it isn't just about being, you know, a downer or whatever. Yeah. It's the belief that like, life has no inherent meaning, no point, and Nietzsche passionately absolutely rejected that yeah he wasn't messing around no he wasn't he wasn't afraid to stare into the abyss right but he also firmly believed in our power to create meaning even in the face of that abyss it's kind of a hopeful way to look at it when like, you put it that way yeah and it reminds me of that line from on the genealogy of morality where he says man would rather will nothingness than not will wow okay. it's like he's saying we crave meaning so much we'd rather invent it ourselves than just face an empty existence we'd rather make it up than have nothing exactly wow okay so not a nihilist got it definitely not which brings us to maybe his most famous idea the ubermensch or like everybody else probably knows it superman right the superman and let's be real for a second the word itself it can sound a little a little advanced a little intense yeah a little much it conjures up images of you know, capes and superpowers. And yeah, tights and... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> booths. But that's a total misreading. Right. What Nietzsche meant by Ubermensch wasn't about, like, physical dominance or anything like that. Okay. It was about exceeding our self-imposed limitations. You know, think about, like, entrepreneurs who disrupt entire industries, artists who break creative boundaries, even everyday people challenging, you know, social norms to fight for a better world. I like that. That's the spirit of the Ubermensch right there. Yeah. Daring to create something new, something more. It's like that quote, become who you are. Yes. It's about stepping into your full potential, even if it ruffles some feathers along the way. Absolutely. But you know what else I think is interesting? For someone who declared that God is dead, Nietzsche's work has this like surprisingly spiritual depth, wouldn't you say? Oh, totally. And the interview really bigs into this, especially when it brings up, thus spoke Zarathustra. Yeah, it's this idea of spirituality without God that he was getting at. Okay. He wasn't advocating for a cold, meaningless existence. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Instead, he challenged us to find meaning in the human experience itself, to strive for greatness and embrace the fullness of life, even the tough parts. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, he has this incredible line that I think speaks to that. He says, you must be ready to burn yourself in your own flame. Mm. How could you rise anew if you have not first become ashes? That's right. Talked about intense. Intense. It's like he's saying, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. Because that's where the growth happens. Absolutely. And speaking of shaking things up, the AI uses a very specific word to describe Nietzsche, iconoclast. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. What is an iconoclast? I feel like some of our listeners might not know. So an iconoclast smashes idols, right? Okay. And Nietzsche, he was all about dismantling those unquestioned beliefs and comfortable lies of his time. Like what? Well, think about figures like Galileo, who challenged the church's view of the cosmos, or Martin Luther King Jr. fighting against the deeply ingrained idol of racial segregation. Right. That's the spirit of the iconoclast, not just tearing things down, but clearing the way for something truer, something more just to emerge. So it's that thing of you don't accept the default settings, you question everything. Exactly. Question everything. But, you know, for all his talk about smashing idols, this AI, Nietzsche doesn't shy away from acknowledging his own, shall we say, healthy ego. Yeah, a little bit of ego there. I mean, there's a whole section where it dives into how wise Nietzsche thought he was even referencing that chapter in Ecce Homo called Why I Am So Wise. Yeah, that's a bold title. It is. But, you know, if you can kind of get past the surface level bravado... There's a deep self-awareness there, too. Really? It's almost like he's daring us to examine our own egos, our own blind spots. He's saying, hey, I'm not afraid to be honest about my flaws. My ambitions are you. Huh. 
I never thought about it like that. And that takes guts. It does. To be that open about yeah. yourself. I mean, the guy knew how to make an entrance, that's for sure. He did. But let's talk about this idea of embracing life's chaos because it ties into something else. The interview explores Nietzsche's fascination with the Greek god Dionysus. Oh, yeah. The god you know, Dionysus. passion revelry and, well, maybe a little bit of wine field frenzy. A little wild. It's not exactly what you'd expect from a philosopher. Right. It's not exactly the image that pops into your head when you think, you know, philosophy You're professor. Liking. Tweed and elbow patches. Exactly. But remember, for Nietzsche Dionysus, it wasn't just about, you know, partying. Okay. It was about embracing the full spectrum of human experience. Okay. The ecstasy, the sorrow, the creative fire that can emerge from chaos. It's about saying yes to life in all its messy, unpredictable glory. Which is kind of terrifying when you think about it. It can be. Like, are we ready for that level of yes? That's the question, isn't it? It is so, it's like that famous Nietzsche quote, I am not a man, I am dynamite. He said what he said. He wasn't afraid to explode the neat little boxes we try to put ourselves and our experiences in. Exactly. And you know what this ties into, okay. what we were talking about earlier? The ubermensch. Yes. Uh, because to become something more, to push past our limits, we have to embrace the unknown, the unpredictable. You yeah. have to be willing to, like, dance with chaos a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure I'm coordinated enough for that. It's more of a metaphorical dance. Okay, good. Because I have two left feet. Which is a fascinating juxtaposition because the interview also highlights how Nietzsche saw permanence within impermanence. How did those two ideas even coexist? It's a paradox for sure. And this is where his concept of the Apollonian and Dionysian forces comes in. Okay, give me a little refresher on those two. So he explored this in depth in The Birth of Tragedy. Okay. Where he argues that these two seemingly opposite forces, reason versus passion order versus chaos. Yeah. They're actually intertwined and essential for a meaningful life. So it's not about picking a side Team Apollo or Team Dionysus. Right. It's about finding that dynamic balance between the two. Precisely. Think of it like this. Apollo gives a structure form, the ability to make sense of the world. Okay. But Dionysus is that spark of creativity, the raw energy that pushes us to break boundaries and create something new. Okay. I'm starting to see how this all connects. We've got the drive to create meaning, even in a meaningless world. The courage to become the ubermensch, the willingness to embrace chaos and the dance between order and chaos. It's like Nietzsche is giving us a whole new operating system for life. And the best part is it's not a one-size-fits-all system. Oh, good. He's giving us the tools to question, to explore, to create our own meaning, to find our own star dancing moment. Now, you can't just drop a phrase like star dancing without explaining it. You're right. I got a little carried away there. Just a tad. Remember that line from Thus Spoke Zarathustra? You must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. Oh, yeah. Nietzsche believed that true creativity, true meaning-making, emerges from embracing the complexities and contradictions within ourselves. Okay. Those moments of friction, of chaos, those are the birth pangs of something new, something beautiful, something uniquely you. So it's not about achieving some perfect state of order or enlightenment. It's about leaning into the messy, dynamic process of becoming. Precisely. I can get behind that. It's about having the courage to question everything, even our own cherished beliefs, and to constantly push ourselves beyond our comfort zones. Right. And in doing so, we might just give birth to our own dancing star, a unique contribution, a burst of creative energy, a life lived on our own terms. I love that it's like Nietzsche is giving us permission to be our own messy, brilliant, ever-evolving selves. And to never stop questioning. Never stop striving to become a little more uber every day. I think that's a pretty great note to end on. But before we go, I have to ask, what's your personal star dancing moment? Was there a specific time when you really felt Nietzsche's ideas click for you? You know, it's funny you should ask that. Yeah. Because I think, you know, everyone has those moments where like an idea just hits you at the right time. Right place, right time. Exactly. And for me, it was actually during a pretty tumultuous period of my life. Oh, really? Yeah, I was reading Beyond Good and Evil. Okay. And there's this line that just stopped me in my tracks. Okay, what is it? It's, what does not kill me makes me stronger. Oh, wow. It's become such a cliche. I know. You hear it everywhere. But at that moment, it was like this lightning bolt of insight. Really? I realized that I wasn't just surviving those challenges. Mm -hmm. I was actually being forged yeah. by them becoming more resilient, more me because of them. Wow. It's like what doesn't kill you gives you superpowers. Right. Nietzsche the superhero. That's the power of Nietzsche. He doesn't just, you know, offer these like abstract theories. Right. 
he gives us actual tools for like navigating the complexities of human existence. Okay. And he reminds us that the path to growth and meaning is often paved with those very challenges we might try to avoid. The stuff that makes us want to crawl under the bed and hide. Exactly. It's like he's saying, don't just endure life. Engage with it. Yes. Wrestle with the big questions. Embrace the unknown and see what kind of dancing star you can create. I love that. And and that journey of self-discovery, that yeah. willingness to question everything and embrace our own becoming, that's what makes Nietzsche so relevant. Even today. Even today. He wasn't trying to you know, hand us a finished philosophy. It's not a finished product. He was giving us the tools to create our own. So if you're listening to this and you're like, huh, this Nietzsche guy, he's kind of onto something. Don't just take our word for it. Right. Dive into the source material. Read the books. You might be surprised by what you discover, not just about his ideas, but about yourself. And who knows, you might even find yourself having your own star dancing moment. Ah. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the abyss and the incredible potential that lies within it. To be continued. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep diving deep.